If you were having coffee with me, I'd be super glad to have you visit my temple of words. I had taken a small, small vacation in celebration of my ninth anniversary. Yeah, apparently this temple of words and I are married. It's been nine years and sometimes I ask myself, why am I here? And part of the answer still remains the same, my immortality. There's an inside joke from people acquainted with my blog on how I have a blog post about almost anything one could ask me. And if it's not there, I'm likely to write about it. If you're having coffee with me, I'll tell you that one of my whimsical dreams is to travel the world, experience different cultures, and write about it over a cup of coffee. Even though the furthest I've traveled away from the place I was born is within an 800 kilometer radius, I consider myself a digital nomad. Being at home anywhere as long as I can access the internet. I also toy with the fanciful idea of being a stay-at-home husband. When I initially posted the tweets about being a stay-at-home husband, I had a romanticized idea about a quiet place and kids. Now the newfound respect for authors who are parents. Over the past fortnight, I've had lots of practice as a stay-at-home uncle. My nephew and niece are on for the holidays. Riddle me this, what's barely aged and has monster energy for the days? I bet your answer wouldn't be this scary looking pre-workout energy drink. I was fairly confident no business would have business that would involve turning their clients into a literal skull and bones. So it shouldn't be lethal, right? Drinking this stuff is equivalent to taking four cups of coffee infused with high octane fuel. You feel like you can do everything, everywhere, forever. Keeping a constant eye on little bundles of energy is quite exhausting. Take your eyes off them and boom, they're up to some crazy stunts doing exactly why they shouldn't be doing that can get you arrested for gross negligence. Thank whoever invented Teletubbies. Bless Tinky Winky, Lala, Paul, and Tipsy. Of all the places in the house, how can a child's favorite place be the bathroom full of buckets with icy cold, crystal clear water and a potential drowning hazard? Five seconds in the bathroom and the kids are all dressed like a baptism, maybe an exorcism, judging from the squirrels. One fears what can happen if they're in there any second longer. Constantly reminding myself to check that the bathroom door is closed at all times. How about when you're sitting there trying to watch a movie with the kids and a stranger knocks on their door and they carry the child. Then they ask if you know the kid because they picked him up outside playing in traffic. Oops! If the kid's parents are reading this, I promise it wasn't on purpose. The prayers you make that at least it was a stranger of the kind sort and not the type who steal little babies and even adults that are constantly going missing with the flyers being shared on social media asking if you've seen them. Home probably feels like a prison now for the little ones. And guess when you start to feel a little bad for keeping them cooped up? You find they're busy learning prison break and the great escape is planned. You gotta keep the gate chained up. How does one even get the time to do anything else? Schools will be opening soon and I'll be thrilled for schools to start and the kids to go back and being their parents' problems. <laughs> if the parents are reading this, it's been fun. Let's do this again next holiday. Or not. If you're having coffee with me, I'll tell you that our crazy inflation seems to have stabilized before breaching the 1 is to 1,000 mark to the US dollar. The power of market rate seems to be reducing. The government has been congratulating itself on the effectiveness of its measures. It's still early days though. Let's see what happens. The meme below captures my reaction when I saw the news that it's no longer mandatory to wear face masks in public. People haven't been really wearing them anyway, just draping them across their chins unless police officers are nearby. Then came the other shoe provided one is fully vaccinated with three doses of vaccine and carrying your vaccination cards as proof.
So I take it police will be checking on people without masks and asking for to see their vaccination cards. Sounds like a lot of unnecessary work. Can we just do away with the charade already? Sometimes the government behaves like a toddler with monster energy focusing on all the wrong things. Like now they just gazetted the new prices for prospective political candidates. A presidential candidate, 20,000 US dollars. Parliamentary candidate, 1,000 United States dollars. Councillors, 100 USD each. They say it's to discourage unserious candidates and reduce unnecessary political aspirants. But it also serves as a bottleneck where those who can afford to pay can't be political players. Reminds me of how back in our history one couldn't vote if they didn't have a particular education qualifications or they didn't have a certain kind of employment, their voice didn't matter. Democracy is such a weird concept. If you're in Kenya, what's going on over that side? We have elections coming up in here. And some say Kenya is a side. Not sure what kind of side. What's been going on in your neck of the woods? The kids have been a little too quiet. I need to go find out what they've been up to.